hi guys welcome back to my channel i am valente chrissy and if you are looking for a change in your life you are at the right channel because on this channel we are all about self-improvement on this video i am with my accountability partner that you've seen a lot i will be talking about uh, depression and anxiety this video was highly requested by one of our subscribers shout out to you and please keep them coming we do like your recommendations and your requests on certain topics and we are more than willing to do them so how are you yeah, i'm good thank you i'm okay thank you so much for joining us again you're welcome yeah okay so based on your two stories that you told us mm. it was part one and part two uh we talked more about university failure how you felt and everything yeah. and i do believe and think that you have Fault kind of depression, stress, and anxiety in those moments of varsity. So, can you please tell me if you've ever experienced that? Yeah, correct. In fact, um, it was more depression towards the end than just stress and anxiety. Okay. It was. I would only describe it as one of the worst moments of my life. <laughs> yeah, that must be difficult. Yeah, you can imagine. Definitely. Um, the feeling of the world is about to come to an end hanging over my shoulders and my head okay. all the time like my life was over there was pretty much no reason for me to live and continue living except for just one thought all the time okay mm -hmm. just a summary can you take us back on what happened and then you can just tell us um based on the depression part and how it started well it might have actually been caused just by my own anger <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but it started from I would say high school, yeah. pretty much grade 12, um, where I sought to, to you know, finish school and then go and study whatever I wanted. In that case, it was media. Yeah. And then I was given a no as an answer. I was not given the opportunity to actually even try. So I didn't accept that paper. Okay. I didn't like that. It was, I was told, uh, something else was chosen for me instead of what i wanted so it started making me feel very bad i got stressed um but i finished school i said i'm gonna give my all you know in high school yeah. and i gave my all i passed well but that didn't impress my family um, to to actually help me get to where i wanted to get at the time so it got me very angry and that anger built up over the years, over the days and months that I was going to uh, varsity. Okay. While I was in varsity, my first year and a few months, then it started being very, very stressful to the point where I felt that nothing else matters. Yeah. Life doesn't matter. Nobody matters. Family doesn't matter. I don't matter. My health doesn't matter. I was always closed up in my bedroom. Okay. And I would get out only to go to class come back from class, eat, go to the library, come back from the library, try to study, but I was literally not concentrating. Okay. So it was like a total shout that shut down in my mind. Okay. So what I pick up from what you are telling us is that um, it started as a stress. Yeah. I believe that we all have stress, but it depends if your stress does not have any outcome, it builds up to anxiety and you end up being depressed okay so did at some point did you realize that you were depressed or it was just a feeling that did not have any outcome on it look i felt bad i felt bad about myself i felt yeah. like i'm total nothing but i never realized that it was depression okay. i kind of identified that yes it is stress i'm stressed i'm not happy yeah but i couldn't have thought it's to the level of depression because depression is a whole ball game on itself but um, around 2014 15 somewhere there yeah um, I went to see a psychologist in fact I was invited in in a department of uh, labor yeah. uh, building to do interviews and to do a bit of trainings about how to get into interviews and get work so the lady who came and give us all the trainings she uh, introduced herself as a psychologist yeah. and I thought <laughs> I might need some help so let me yeah. schedule you know 
a meeting with her. And she said, yes, you can come on this day. Then I went to her, I told her my story. I said, I want something, but I'm not given that opportunity. Okay. And she said, okay, take me through everything. And I started explaining how I feel and everything. Then she later said, I believe you are depressed, but we need further diagnosis and you should come back. Unfortunately, I got scared because <laughs> I didn't come back. Okay, that was the... why you didn't come back? Um, okay, and I, I, I know it's not easy like to tell your story and especially to someone that you don't know. I always feel like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's also depends. Sometimes for me, it's kind of easy to, to tell my story to someone else, to someone that I don't know, then to someone that I know, because I know that, okay, if I don't know, you're not going to judge me. Yeah. So what made you not to come back? Because I'm sure you were getting help and with the facts that you were able to to say how you feel. I had already said quite a lot about how I feel. Yeah. And I went there with the purpose of getting help. Definitely, you're right. I was about to get the help. Yeah. But her telling me that I might be depressed. So that, that depressed part was just too much for It you. was too much. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. just accept that I'm depressed. I had seen or rather read and heard and about people who get depressed and later commit suicide, irrespective of what they have in life yeah. and irrespective of how much they've achieved. Yeah. People get depressed and then that leads to their death. Okay, so you mentioned on uh, the previous video, again guys, please do go and watch those videos. You mentioned that um, it, it went on, this thing of you having to change universities, I'm sure it was just too much. So, you picked up or you got a psychologist at, in your first year. So, did, did that occur also to the other years? Or it was only for that period and then after that you knew that you were depressed and you were able to deal with it? Um, it was only for from that one time when yeah. she said that um, I was probably, she actually said probably, yeah. depressed which made me feel like no, no, no. <laughs> but at the time I was actually not in university it okay. was during a short period of me now trying to look for a job before okay. I went back to university again okay. in that very short period I got invited to the Department of Labor because I had actually sent my CV yeah. even to the Department of Labor okay. and then they gave me an, uh, lessons about how to get jobs and stuff that's when I decided I want to meet this person who introduced herself as a, a psychologist. Okay. But after meeting her, I didn't do it again. And I didn't go to any other doctor or psychologist regarding how I felt. Okay. Uh, however, I did read a lot on depression after that. Because mm -hmm. yeah. now you wanted to find out, what, okay, what is this? What was she talking about? Is she right? <laughs> <laughs> she might be yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. and what I found out really did scare me even more. Okay. It seemed very true. Okay. That's exactly how I was feeling, like the world is coming to an end. I was feeling hopeless okay. about myself. Okay, so take us through your, okay, I'll, let me say your, your daily routine. You wake up in the morning, I'm sure you have things that you need to do. So for someone who might be feeling the same way as you were feeling, how does it look like? How does your day look like? Or your life look like? Or your surroundings? Like everything when, when you are depressed because in your case you were able to find out that you are depressed but I think it was a, a, a sense of indenial on your side and but you, at the end of the day you wanted to find out more if actually what she was telling you was true. Mm. So uh, take us through that moment, those days months and even years because i'm sure it's okay to yes well um it's a very difficult one to, to answer <laughs> um in most cases i actually find myself just pretty much sleepwalking through life okay. i had goals but only because i felt like i'm required by life itself to have goals yeah they didn't matter okay you know? um I wake up in the morning, of course, bath, make breakfast. Um, there was a time when I worked at Mr. Price. So I'd wake up when I was walking 
or rather taking a taxi, whichever, walking or taking a taxi to Mr. Mr. Price. It was just the journey that was meaningless to me. Yeah. I was just going there anyway. The only time I felt something, a bit of joy, is when I was with the people at Mr. Price. Okay. Outside of there, even if I was with family or some of my friends, I, f I was really not present mentally. Yeah. I was not in the right state of mind, I could say. Yeah. And after work, coming back home, literally, Either I'm playing music on my way and trying to make myself feel better, which really didn't work, or I'd find something to do on the road. Okay. You know, that will make me feel better before I actually get home and feel bad again about myself. Okay. So nothing was important anymore. Okay. There was nothing. So you actually don't see you don't see anything like um Okay, you don't see anything behind or whatever. <laughs> you don't see anything except that shade that you are feeling at that time. Yeah. Is there any light? Because I always, um, I, I always tell you with myself that every time when I'm stressed, for me, it's like my stress is only for today. And I have this hope in me and I believe that tomorrow might change. Yeah. And I think that is how I cope with life with hoping and believing that tomorrow is going to be much better. So in that space, um, I remember we were talking, or I was telling you this, that sometimes you, you, you stay with people and just because of how you are able to hide your pain and how you are able to hide how you feel, people are not going, people are not going to see. And is there any moment where you felt like maybe people see that you are different from the Martin that you know, mm. or from the Martin that they know. Even like, let's, let's say your partner at the time, or your, your siblings, or anyone who was around you, did they ever see that, okay, you're not okay? I think everybody could see. Okay. There were quite a lot of people who were trying to assist okay. me, give me advice, um, tell me that everything is gonna be okay, you'll get where you want. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody could see one the second thing is mom the results of the things that i was doing okay. was always bad okay of course because it was affected by the fact that i'm not happy so i yeah. couldn't do anything and succeed in it okay so i was always behind in many things okay so at the time to answer the other part of your question i really thought that that was it <laughs> <laughs> that it will never end it felt like that was my life and it would be my life forever. Okay. That state of uh, stress and anxiety and depression it felt like there was nothing beyond it. Okay. I couldn't see myself out of it and actually express you know, some joy and happiness. Okay. In most cases, I would be pretending to be. You were smile, uh, look joyous and wear nice and dress up go be with people when I can but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Okay. So um okay, I understand. And that must be really, really hard. And is there any things that you were avoiding at the time? Like such as eating. <laughs> I know some people when they are depressed they will, they're they're not gonna eat. Yeah. Do you have do you have those moments where you had to avoid certain things? All right, well, it's not a matter of avoiding, really, but um, habits may be formed. Some yeah. habits, most habits, when you are not feeling well, will be negative, yeah. such as not eating. Um, you just don't feel like, you, you don't have appetite, you don't feel like you're hungry, you eat something, it doesn't taste good. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like doing things that you wouldn't do otherwise, like smoking or drinking, which I actually ended up doing those things. Okay. And it's some of those kind of things, bad habits that would actually make me feel a little better, only for a moment. Okay. And because it's only for for a moment, you want to feel better again, so you go back <laughs> and again and again. So it's more like okay, uh, I know with alcohol that you you will drink today, you forget, and then you go the following day. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so how does that make you feel? 
the fact that I used to drink. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't call myself a drink. I always <laughs> tried to avoid it. I knew that, okay, I mm -hmm. really shouldn't be drinking you yeah. know, a lot because alcohol can definitely be bad. And I don't like my own behavior when I'm drunk. So I tried to stay away from it, from, but from time to time I definitely find myself there. <laughs> <laughs> but now I, I think you're not doing it because you are depressed. You're just like, oh, okay, I've been there, so let me just enjoy myself. <laughs> well, okay. It yeah. can be fun at times, just for fun. Yeah. Aside from that, still, I still don't enjoy alcohol, even the taste of it. It's not, not really good. Okay. So tell us, um, where are you now? How do you feel now? Emotionally, right now, I'm well. Mm -hmm. I can express myself very well. Um, I, I would say, definitely, a test from my side that the depression is over. Uh, stress, it may be a daily thing, but mostly it's <laughs> constructive stress. Yeah. I'm dealing with something that I want to achieve and finish. So, yeah. for that moment, it might be stressing me because I'm thinking about it, that kind okay. of stress. I think anxious is something that everybody has to deal with every day. <laughs> every single day. <laughs> so now, uh, um, okay, yeah, as you as you're mentioning that stress is something that you deal with all the time. I feel yeah. like actually every second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I even like, yeah. Even before you made uh, we came to make this video, you were like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think generally in, in in life you are always stressed about something and that is quite different with depression depression is worse with uh, the kind of stress that we go through is actually very good because it's a kind of stress that you are actually looking forward to something okay depression on the other hand you're looking forward to nothing it's like there's nothing matters so oh you're looking forward to something very bad very negative and you know it's coming you cannot avoid it yeah that will it could definitely depress you the depression may be minor okay. in the sense that it's only for a time of course after you've passed that situation then you can be stressed a little bit and you'll be dealing with your, your things okay or it can be major similar to the one that i went through which lasted for years okay only that that i didn't take my life have you ever thought of committing suicide? Many times. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us like one event that you're like, okay, on this day, only if you're comfortable? <laughs> well, I was in the University of Western Cape. Okay. Um, I went out, I came from class and went to my and then I was like, okay, I just need to be in class. I need to at least start studying. So I put my bags and I put my books in front of me. And I prepared myself to go through the work that we did in class. Okay. But I just found myself staring at the book an hour past. The only thing that I was thinking about is how sad I actually feel. Yeah. Then I tried to sleep, it didn't work. I figured you know let me go cook and then I went out to there was a shop nearby I went out to buy something okay. I came back after about an hour I found that the pot has melted into the stove the food bent to the point where even the pot started burning Whoa. and it melts <laughs> the pot melts on the stove I've never seen such it melted and it was a hot pot. Okay. I don't know how, but it actually <laughs> melted. <laughs> oh my god, that is so like strange. I started shaking, I was scared. Mm -hmm. I at least there was no fire. Okay. And then switched off the stove until um, the pot the, the melted pot it got hard so okay. I could remove it. Okay. And then I threw it away. Went to my room try to think of myself it only made me feel worse and then i left i thought you know what i'm just gonna find a place where it's high enough for me to try and see if i can jump i was shaking my heart was beating i felt 
it's indescribable how I felt actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did that uh, thought of committing suicide or attempting of committing suicide? I mean, uh, did it was it occurring to you as um, as you felt this as you had this feeling in you, or it was like those instances? There were instances, but it was constant. It would happen from well, one day or another. It just happened from one day to another. It okay. didn't happen every day, and it was not like something that was constant throughout the day when it happened on that day. Um, of course, I didn't go through with it. I never attempted, yeah. but I thought. Yeah. And in such instances where I should take a walk to try and see what I can find which could assist me, well, not assist in this situation, <laughs> <laughs> but something that I could yeah. use, mm -hmm. um, during the walk, I actually started reflecting and feeling better. Okay. You know, um, in those instances, I'd feel at least a little better enough okay. for me not to do it. I guess maybe I wasn't very serious about it. <laughs> Life is good. I no, I think uh, it was a moment, the season. And did you pray about it? Or? In the moment, especially during between 2013 and 14, yeah. I was maybe sometimes I've been in church but I was really not spiritual at all. Okay. I didn't pray about the end of my you know stress. I never did. Okay. And then but later on when yes I sort of started seeing some light when I was in the University of I mean China China University of Technology. Yeah. Then I started praying as well. It was not about praying about you know my depression because by that time you actually had learned that i might be depressed yeah it was more about i want a better future i want to achieve what i actually set out for myself okay. i want to get there. that main goal so now you see you see yourself and you see the future of yourself because yes. i think i think that is actually a quite nice prayer of praying for everything in advance it's yeah. more like your hope is coming back now you have more faith yeah. of yourself in your life you no longer have these thoughts that okay if it can just end here it has or it has to end here mm. yeah i think without hope there cannot be any faith yeah i think if you are hopeless you might even stop believing in god <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so, talking about that did you ever felt like um god was hating you i know that a lot of people when they are going through things they just feel like god has left them they get angry especially at god instead of people yeah i think at that moment i no longer cared about god mm -hmm. it wasn't more about he hate me or i just felt like yeah and whatever <laughs> <laughs> okay so for for someone I'm sure there's someone out there who is depressed yeah. and then stressed. That, or stressed or whatever or maybe they have anxiety and then there's there's people around mm -hmm. them so if you can just tell us if you are if I had to be around someone who is depressed what can I look out to those people is there is there any way for me to be able to see them they're okay they're not okay there are ways. Yeah. Um, one, people who actually would not even look at you when they're talking to you. They don't want mm -hmm. to listen. They want to talk all the time. Okay. They might be present, but you can see that this person doesn't want to be with you. They just want to. You know, so eye contact. <laughs> eye contact matters. Yeah. Yes. And not just eye contact, just, you know, the presence. Yeah. That person would rather find a corner and sit alone than find just one person to be with because mm -hmm. i would speak from my um experience that's how i was okay um if we were maybe let's say in a party yeah i'd rather be alone at the corner than to find any person and, try and socialize to. yes yeah. you, know, you don't have that you, know, you cannot express yourself yeah you know people who may seem like they care but you can see from them then yeah. they, how they react and their reactions that maybe they, they really don't care yeah. it doesn't matter to them and i think it takes um someone who knows you to to understand 
or to see that you are actually a different person now. Yeah. And I only say that um, for me, okay, I'm more into social media. <laughs> yeah, I don't that much into social media. For me, I'm into social media, guys. And all the time when I'm depressed, I'll just be off of social media. It's either I deactivate my Facebook account, I can be on Instagram, but I'm not gonna post anything. On WhatsApp, I, I won't be there. So it comes right back to you, you are no longer socializing. <laughs> I'm no longer, I, I don't. I don't socialize when I'm depressed. And yeah. I prefer also to deal with my own things in mm. my own corner. And when I'm fine, you'll see me. Then you okay, come back. I come back mm. and I'm fine. And I've seen, as I was asking you, if uh, is there any way people can try to see that, okay, you are not okay. Um, I have friends who have reached out to me and say and ask if, because for me, it doesn't take like more than a week or two, or even two days not to be on social media. It, either I'm sharing something, especially on WhatsApp, and if you don't see me, it sh there should be a problem, like a serious problem. Yeah. yeah. So I am very like appreciative of my friends who are able to say, hey, you've been so quiet for the past days, what is happening? Yeah. I really appreciate it because sometimes you are not able to, to share mm -hmm. and sometimes you, you, you can't just reach anyone, not because you you don't want people to know what is going on in your life. It's just, you just think, oh, what's he? Um, everyone is dealing with their own things and maybe when I'm trying to tell you my story, you're going to be like, Ish, nam is young, yeah. that kind of thing. And you will know when um, <laughs> someone is always telling you of their story. At yeah. The time. They are actually going through something now. Yeah. And they are trying to express how they feel all the time. Even yeah. when you really don't want to hear about it. Yeah. You know, then you know that whatever this person is going through is serious. It is, yeah. You know, I'd always be, I had friends, I'd always be on the phone with a particular set of people that I always tell them how I'm feeling. Yeah. It's more of, complaining yeah you are actually trying to cry out yeah and also when you're saying that is kind of you know when when when, when i'm let's say i'm trying to complain to you it, i think it's also started as a complaint some people are depressed and then they'll be complaining about the same thing over and over such yes. as uh, let's say a person is in a relationship mm. and he or she will be complaining about the relationship and how much the relationship hurts her and everything or it can be about work or it can it can be about home or something they lost or something exactly like and sometimes it can be annoying and you to end listen. up yeah. <laughs> to listen to and you end up being like oh my god i why are you not moving on that you don't realize how much that hurts them and they are depressed based on that mm -hmm. so i think it's um, actually important for us to to be able to to comfort people when they are complaining mm -hmm. especially if a person complains more than once they are not happy about the same thing <laughs> about the same thing they are not happy yeah. yeah you need to pick up those signs and yeah. need to realize that people are going through some tough times at the moment and yeah try to assist with just even just words you know because yeah. sometimes there's not much you can do. You can't go no. and fight that person's battles. No. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Also, um, before we close, uh, for someone, uh, okay, before you close, what can you tell someone who may be experiencing depression, stress, anxiety, and so on, and they just don't have any hope right now? No, no. I would say look up. You know, the, the sun is shining. <laughs> life is actually good yeah. it's only bad because you feel like it's bad yeah because you're going through some tough time right but if you can actually make it through that part and go to the other side yeah. of it you know it's good and you will feel like you you know you, you have nothing. never been <laughs> ever you know? yeah yeah so just try to be resilient and um Plan on how you can get out of that by making goals and see yourself as a better person in the future and try yeah. to attain that. Because if you don't see yourself there, how are you gonna get yourself there? You're not. You actually not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything yeah. else? No. 
that's that, i think that one covers everything so you there. need to look on the bigger picture of yourself look up see yourself being where you want to be i think that is the yeah. the most profound advice thank you so much Welcome. and thank you so much for sharing your story i'm sure and i Welcome. hope this is gonna reach someone who is feeling the same yeah. and people, people you are not alone no um, you are not and social media if if you see i always say this if you see that you are depressed because you feel like you are behind in your life stay away from social media Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I do hope that you are feeling better if you have been going through the same thing as Martin and yeah and if you know someone who's also dealing with the same thing please do try to help as much as you can and if you have any recommendations of the videos like this one please do share on the comment section below and we'll see you next time thank you for now Bye. Bye.